Hi, this is Ginger Rankin with Izzy Harry and Company, and you're joining us for another uh, session of Trunk Treasures, and we're speaking on this in this series on foundational principles for our lives, for our walk with God, and we're addressing specifically one of what I believe is the foundational things that we'll have to build on, and that is fear. We've got to get rid of fear. I'm not sure exactly where we left off in our last video, except that I know we were talking about the perfect love of God, the love of God being perfected in us, and we were reading out of 1 John chapter 4 about that, where fear has torment, and that is not God's will for our lives. And I was speaking about my father and his, uh, well, it, and it's across the board for anybody who's under a spirit of fear. Um, one of the things that we're going to find is that we, we not only don't have power, we don't have confidence. We won't have self-confidence. We won't have confidence in God. And we need to have God confidence first. But we won't have confidence in that. And we will be under uh, condemnation. And so right now, I know we probably don't need to uh, look this scripture up and quote it, but there may be some people, hopefully there are some people watching today who don't know these verses, who have not built <clears throat> their lives. I mean, I'm, I'm not hoping there are people who haven't built their lives on these things yet, but, but hopefully we're, we're maybe introducing, have an audience that we are introducing this new Thing to their lives and so let's look at Romans 8 verse 1 because it says here there is now there is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus who walk not after the flesh but after the spirit so when we're walking after the spirit of God God is going to, the Spirit of God is going to lead us out of all condemnation. All condemnation. And why do we have condemnation? Well, we have condemnation that comes, uh, you know, that came from sin. Um, literally, God's, uh, you know, God rejected. We can't even come to God apart from the blood of Jesus Christ on our behalf and believing that that is the atonement for our sin because sin brings a, a, a tearing apart. The Bible says that our sins are what separated us from God. And thank God for Jesus because he came and gave his life that we could be reconciled back unto God. So there's that condemnation, but there's also the condemnation that we need to know and get it worked out. Work out your salvation with fear and trembling. Know and understand and be able to get it worked out in our inner man that we don't have to be afraid of God. We don't have to fear God in a way that we can't come before him. Um that we have thoughts that that he's gonna he's out to get us, you know, that he's gonna bring ill into our lives. He's gonna, you know, if we disappoint him, we are in big, big trouble because he's gonna come after us. It's it's not that. God wants us to know that now we have been made one with him. Now we can draw nigh unto him, and he will draw nigh unto us, James 5 says. He wants us to run to him and, and to get in. And, you know, I wasn't going to do this, but let's just look at another verse that I know is very, very common to those who are, are uh, grown up in the Lord and grown up in his word. <clears throat> but here's a scripture that will tell you how confident you can be to come in and go out now uh, in that relationship that you've been given. 
um, through Christ Jesus, how you can come in and you can go out before God. And I'm looking for it real quick here. Um, anyway, I can't, I can't find it right now, but, but, uh, we come boldly before his throne of grace in our time of need. And, uh, you know, he receives us and we don't have to be afraid to enter into his gates, to enter into conversation with him. Well, I had it right here and I don't know why I turned away from it. Verse 14, seeing then that we have a great high priest, which is Jesus, that is passed into the heavens, Jesus, the son of God. Let us hold fast our profession. We have to hold fast to it. For we have not a high priest which cannot be touched with the feeling of our infirmities, but was in all points tempted like as are we, yet without sin. Let us therefore come. How? Because we're trusting on that blood that was shed on our behalf. And we can have put all our confidence in that now. We are sons and daughters of the Most High God, and we can come in and go out, and we can fellowship freely with our Heavenly Father. And that, again, is the love of God being perfected in us. Now, I grew up having a great fear of God that I couldn't approach Him at all. I would cry out to Him and cry out to Him. I had the boldness to do that from the time I was a child. <clears throat> and when I learned all of these things that I'm sharing with you here today, oh my, you let your guard down. You know, you, you come to know that God understands our frailty, the Bible says. He knows what we're made of. You know, he knows our humanness. That's why he sent Jesus. And now he's working in us with the word and the spirit to create, recreate us in Christ Jesus. That's what the Bible says in 2 Corinthians 5, 17. If any man be in Christ, behold, he is a brand new creature. We're recreate, we're created in Christ for good works, uh, Ephesians 2 says. But here it says, let us therefore come boldly. We can come boldly under the throne of grace that we can obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. Now, I know that a lot of my father's fear is that there are things that he has done in his lifetime from, you know, who knows. And, and, and I think that he's not completely convinced that he's forgiven. And I'm telling you, you have to be completely convinced that you have been forgiven. The word of God tells you you've got to work on convincing yourself of it. Whatever you have to do to get that done so that you can be freed up to go in and out of his presence again freely. One thing that's so important is that when we sin, if we sin, we realize instantly, you know what, Jesus, forgive me. I did this, forgive me. You do it instantly. And he, he says in 1 John that he's faithful and just to forgive us our sins, cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Instant, 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 moment by moment by moment by moment. Some things in the Lord take a long time to build. Um, things that he wants to perform you know, th through us, ministries or callings or whatever. But this one thing I know, that sin, if you confess it immediately and get cleansed of it, God will forgive you. And you've got to forgive yourself immediately and move on. And if you don't, uh, that's when you bring things on you that are 